hanging with the big boys. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Random Distractions video. This is the final video in my comparison series of the 1723S THX Tower speakers. In my last video, I compared them against some Polk and Martin Logan speakers. And in this one, we're actually gonna do a few of them. It's gonna be Revel, Dynaudio, and JTR. As I mentioned, I'm part of an AVS forum group, and if you're in the DFW area, I'll leave a link in the description below if you would like to join. But I reached out to them uh, to see if I could bring these over and compare them against what they had. One of them goes by the username of Rusties, just like the bumper ointment. And so thanks to him for letting me bring those out there. And we're gonna be going up against a couple of different speakers. Uh, one of them is the Revel Performa 3 F208s, uh, the Dyn Audio Evoke 30s, and then the JTR Noesis, or Noesis, Noesis, I think is how you say it, 215 RTs. And just like all the other videos that I've done in the past, uh, I tried to keep some of the parameters the same. So I'm gonna be using my Peachtree Karina to power the speakers. And what I do is listen to, the, uh, to a couple of different songs using their speakers. And then I record one song uh, that I've been using in all of the other videos uh, to get an audio recording and then also to get REW measurements. Uh, the Peachtree Karina is left at the same volume in all of the different videos that I've done, which was negative 20 on the volume knob. And I don't try to speaker match or volume match the speakers, uh, but this is to kind of show what the sensitivity of the different speakers uh, does in regards to the volume. So first up, I'm gonna share the audio recordings of the song. And a couple of notes here are that the 1723S is gonna be ported since the other speakers featured a ported design as well. The Revels were in his uh, big open living room space, uh, so there's an audio recording of the Arundels in that room. And then he also has a dedicated home theater room where he had the JTRs. Uh, but we brought in the Dyn Audio uh, speakers to do the comparison of them in that room. And there's also an audio recording of the Arundels in the dedicated home theater space as well. All right, so first up we have the living room space and here are the 1723S. Right, and now the Revel F208s in the living room. Moving over to the home theater space, I'm gonna play the Dyn Audio Evoke 30s first. Uh, so here's that recording.
right, and now the 1723S in the home theater. And finally, the JTR 215 RTs in the home theater room. All right, so now let's take a look at those REW measurements. All right, so starting off in the living room, we have the Arundels and now the Rebels. And it looks like the Arundels have some more sub bass and bass output, uh, although they do both seem to have this dip here, which is probably from the room. Um, and then uh, they're pretty similar as it goes along here, but looking at even in this uh, 112 smoothing, it looks like the Rebels have a smoother response in the higher frequencies. I'll go ahead and turn on psychoacoustic smoothing and here you can see the difference is a little bit better um, as far as the output here in the lower lower end and then the Rebels do have a fairly linear response in the higher frequencies compared to the Arundels. Now in the home theater room, I'll first show the Dyna Audio Evoke 30s. In person, this was the first recording we did, and when I heard them and saw the graphs low in response, uh, as we see here, I felt pretty sure that the Arundels would do much better. Uh, because as we saw in the living room, <laughs> this is what the response was out there. And to my surprise, uh, here's the response of the Arundels in the home theater room. As you can see, they match pretty well with the rest of the response with some minor differences. And while there is a difference in the low end response, it's nowhere near what we had in the living room. When I showed Rusty's the chart, he did say that he was aware of the 40 hertz null in the room, so wasn't surprised about that. Uh, switching over to psychoacoustic smoothing, uh, here's how they compare. Switching back to 112 smoothing, I will go ahead and leave the Arundels on and now turn on the JTRs. They are louder, and it's important to point out that the sensitivity of those are 95 dBs compared to the 89 dBs of the Arundels, but unlike the video that had the Klipsch RF-72s, which had a sensitivity of 101, there is a very noticeable difference in the measurements. They also suffer from the 40 Hz null in the room. Turning on psychoacoustic smoothing, uh, here you can see that a little bit better. The Arundels kind of match it here in output as far as this range here, uh, but everything else is definitely a lot louder, uh, but still fairly smooth um, for the JTRs. All right, so those were the measurements, but what did Rusty's and I think? Rusty's was impressed by the performance of the speaker compared to the price, and he thought that they were a really great value. Compared to the Revels, uh, they may offer a different look that some may prefer over the Arundels, but as far as performance goes, uh, they were really close. With the Dyn Audios, uh, they're also a little bit more expensive than the Arundels as well, but they sounded actually pretty similar. I do believe that if it wasn't for that 40 hertz null in the room that the Arundels would have had more bass response, uh, but the Evoque 30s are actually a little bit smaller with less drivers. 
They're also a little bit brighter than the Arendelles, but not by much. Before I talk about the JTRs, if I had ever wondered in the past about whether or not a room would make a difference uh, to a speaker, then these recordings and measurements that I've seen uh, definitely highlight uh, that the room can make a difference. So in regards to the JTRs, when I started diving deeper into home theater, I kept hearing the JTR name. Uh, mostly at first was for the subwoofers and then I started hearing about the speakers. And a lot of the people were saying the same thing, is that they don't look very fancy and they're very big so you need a lot of space uh, but the important thing is that they deliver on the sound so personally i was really excited to finally hear them in person and to be honest i was impressed even with just the peach tree i felt that they performed really well uh, despite being louder it wasn't that kind of loud that felt bad when i went to church sound boot camp to learn how to run sound for our church one of the things that was mentioned was that people don't necessarily dislike loud music it's that they dislike bad sounding loud music. Um, and this was a similar experience. After the recordings and getting the REW measurements, uh, Rusty's hooked his system back up. So connecting to all his amplifiers and hearing the rest of his JTR speakers, including uh, a lot of subwoofers. Uh, this was by far one of the best sounding home theater systems that I had personally heard. Now, granted, I haven't heard that many. So this one's at the very top for now. In fact, I think it was a couple of weeks later, he had a get together of people just come into his house to experience his home theater. So I went back and got to listen to his full home theater set uh, demo, and it was definitely awesome. One of the people that attended was actually Hatteroid Cowboy, which I got to meet, uh, so that was awesome. And he actually did a full home theater tour of Rusty's uh, home theater, so definitely check that video out. You know, if I had the space and definitely the money to be able to uh, get the JTRs, that probably would be the route that I would go, to be honest. Uh, but for now, I'm really happy with my Arundel 1961 system. And although I know the 1723S could not quite uh, get to that level that the JTRs were, um, it did make me wonder what the 1723s uh, might be able to do. Because the 1723S have a sensitivity of 89 dBs, but the 1723 regular ones uh, have a 92 dB sensitivity. It still falls a little bit short of that 95 dBs that the JTRs have, uh, but it is a little bit closer. Well, this unfortunately concludes my comparison series of the Arundel 1723S THX tower speakers. As I mentioned in other videos, I think that there is definitely a speaker out there for everyone, uh, no matter what the price point is. For me, the Arundels have provided great performance for the price that I paid and definitely great looks to go along with that. Well, that's all that I have. I hope that you enjoyed this series and I would definitely appreciate a like, of course, on this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video drops. But until then, I hope you have a good one.